Good morning and welcome. It's a beautiful Friday morning outside. I hope at some point today you and your family get to enjoy this wonderful weather that we've had the past few days. But we're wrapping up our week of daily video devotions today with Matthew chapter 15. So wherever you're at and however you're tuning in, we are so glad to have you with us this morning as we wrap up another week of video devotion. So if you've read along with us this morning, you'll know that there's a lot going on in Matthew 15. The first half or so of the passage is this back and forth that Jesus has with the Pharisees and the scribes about how they understand things differently. Um, it ends with another miracle of Jesus feeding the 4,000. You remember, I think yesterday, Jesus fed the 5,000 in Matthew 14. Um, and then there's these two parts in the middle, and I'm going to focus on the first. And in my Bible, it's verses 21 through 28. There's this Canaanite woman, so a person that's not an, an Israelite, a Gentile, essentially, who comes up to Jesus, who comes up to the disciples, and she's, she's yelling, basically, at Jesus, trying to get his attention. And she wants to get his attention because her daughter has been tormented by a demon, apparently, and she believes that Jesus and the disciples are the ones that can help her free her daughter from this demon that is tormenting her. And we see that at first, She's yelling at Jesus, but Jesus just doesn't acknowledge her. He doesn't even act like he can hear that she's yelling. So she continues to yell, though she persists in her desire to get Jesus to help her. And she continues to yell at the disciples. And the disciples aren't so good at ignoring this woman. And they, I'd imagine the woman begins to get on their nerves a little bit. So they go to Jesus and they say, she's still yelling at us. Is there not anything that you can do for her? And there's this one part of this passage that always just jumps off the page at me. I still can never believe that Jesus says it. And in, in my Bible, it, she has this brief interaction with Jesus, and it starts in verse 25. But she came and knelt before him, meaning Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered her, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. And obviously, as I'm sure it's the case for you too, the part that jumps out to me is the part where Jesus seems to call this woman a dog. I just can't believe that Jesus refers to this lady about any person really as a dog, it just seems so crazy and so wrong to me in some ways. But what does Jesus mean by that? Well, earlier in the passage, he mentions to the disciples that one of the reasons he's not listening to this lady is because she's a Canaanite, she's a Gentile, and Jesus's primary mission, his primary calling is to gather together the lost sheep of Israel, the Israelites. So I think what he means by this is that if he tries to spend too much time healing the Gentiles before he heals all the Israelites and calls all the lost sheep of Israel together, he's really distracted from his primary mission, his primary purpose. But remember, a lot of times in the Gospels, Jesus almost plays with people in a way. And what I mean by that is he, he kind of tests them just to see how great their faith actually is. So I think in this story, one thing that he's doing is that he's, he's testing this lady's faith. She's made her way to Jesus and the disciples so he knows that she must know something about him. She must believe in him somewhat. She's heard stories, I'm sure, about other people that have been healed by Jesus. And Jesus wants to make sure that she really has faith in him and that she really believes that he can heal her daughter. So he makes her demonstrate her faith, prove her faith before him in an interesting way. And, and that's what he's doing in this response. When he refers to her as a dog, I don't really think he's doing it in a derogatory way. I think he's just saying that he wants this woman to recognize that his primary purpose is to the people of Israel and she's a Gentile. But even though she's a Gentile, she still believes. In fact, she probably has greater faith than some of the Israelites do. And Jesus wants to give her space to demonstrate that faith, to prove it. And that's exactly what she does. She has that wonderful response and we're told that, you know, Jesus heals her daughter instantly when she proclaims her faith in Christ. So what does that mean for us today? What lesson can we take from this story today? I think every day we have an opportunity to live into our faith, to demonstrate our faith to others, to share our faith with others. 
So the challenge before us today is simple. What are we doing today to share our faith with others? What are we doing to tell others about the life and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ? What are we doing to share that life, that hope, that love that's changed our lives with other people so that it might change their lives as well? So that's my challenge for you this morning. What are you doing to share the hope and the life and the love that you've experienced from Jesus Christ today with others? What are you doing to share your faith, to demonstrate your faith to others? Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, you've been so good to us. You give us life. You give us your love, your forgiveness, your grace, and your mercy, even when we don't deserve it. God, you give it to us so freely. Lord, you love us. You've created us. You're with us even in times like this, Lord. So may we continue to place our trust and our hope in you. May we be a people of faith a people who demonstrate our faith before others, who share our faith with those that we encounter, that they might have that faith as well. So Lord, we just pray this morning you'd give us opportunities today and in the days to come to share our faith with others, to share the hope that we have found in your son, Jesus Christ, with the people around us, that they might place their hope and their trust in you as well. God, we pray especially for all of those who are um, working long and tiring hours, Lord, our first responders, our medical professionals, Lord. We pray for our small business owners and their employees as they make difficult decisions and face adversity and great challenges today. We pray for those in nursing homes and assisted living facilities and their families. Lord, most of all, we pray for those who are sick and who are hurting those who have lost loved ones in recent days. Lord, we just pray that you would encourage all of them, Lord, that they would feel your presence among them, Lord, that you would just move among them in a special way, Lord. And we pray that we would be the people that they need us to be to encourage them, to pray for them, to support them in this time. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you for our worship service on Sunday morning. It should be posted around 10 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, but I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you on Monday for Matthew 16. Go in peace.